the uh, next uh, speaker. I want uh, to uh, welcome Professor Hun, uh, Hunziker uh, now for uh, his talk, um, um, uh, Eradication of Atherosclerosis, New Steps. Professor Hunziker, you are warmly welcome. Please start. So I would like to talk again on one of my favorite motivations for doing research. Arteriosclerosis, uh, the question what could mean uh, eradication, what are the challenges also to precision and personalization. Let me give you a working definition of eradication and cure of arteriosclerosis. We could uh, call cure in an individual if you treat an individual once and then for can forget the disease for 10 years, no need for chronic medication. You can could talk of eradication of the disease in a society if no clinical uh, cases will occur in this society. Um, I believe that arteriosclerosis should be a prime eradication candidate because if you look at the causes of death on a global scale, it's one of the leading causes of death. If you look at the cost of arteriosclerosis in Europe, then uh, arteriosclerosis alone is much more expensive than all the research we are doing in Europe. Uh, why should we eradicate arteriosclerosis and not just treat it? Because disease course is not predictable. Uh, sudden death or myocardial is the first ever symptom in half of the patients. So you cannot rely on early warnings to do checkup exams. Um, one main point, arteriosclerosis is not a degenerative, degenerative disease. And that means there may be a chance to move from one phenotype, from one disease type to another state where we don't have it. There are some 90-year-old people who have no arteriosclerosis at all. Arteriosclerosis is a lifestyle disease, we know it. This cat will probably have some arteriosclerosis in her uh, arteries. Arteriosclerosis uh, is a complex disease, we have seen that before. And that means we need to find ways to uh, assess the risk, the prevalence in arteriosclerosis, even before symptoms in a patient on an individualized manner. We have a long window of opportunity because arteriosclerosis, uh, before it becomes clinically manifest, has a uh, a decades long window. Arteriosclerosis is liver disease. It's uh, I strongly influenced by uh, cholesterol homeostasis in the liver. Arteriosclerosis is a glucose homeostasis disease, so if you avoid diabetes, you can postpone arteriosclerosis by 10 years. Arteriosclerosis can be triggered by infectious events. Arteriosclerosis has hereditary, hereditary components. Uh, Arteriosclerosis is like a mini organ in your artery. It's a very complex uh, pathophysiology and anatomy. Uh, and as I said, we have a very long time window for decades where we might treat and er eradicate or stabilize the disease before every any clinical disease occurs. Arteriosclerosis is an inflammatory disease. Early on, we see inflammatory changes in the vasculars. Uh, and we know that we can go there with nanotechnologies, for example, these uh, red fluorescent nanocarriers here in the arteriosclerotic block of our mice. We can reach them by targeting, by active targeting. We know there are several avenues to the arteriosclerotic block through the endothelium or from the back door through the vasa vasorum. Uh, we know that inside the block we have a very complex biological constellation of immune events. Uh, we have foam cells in the block that are full of cholesterol that might be a target of uh, treatment. Uh, so the question is, should we kill those foam cells to elim eliminate arteriosclerosis? But unfortunately, this will lead to follow-up events which uh, tend to, to worsen the disease. Uh, if you are there with a nanocarrier nano in the target, what should we do there? Should we do uh, anti-inflammatory therapies? And we will hear some experience about that. And there is also a post about the adverse effect of steroids in the arteriosclerotic block. B bisphosphonates are suited to kill macrophages, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea. We also have to mention that arteriosclerosis is a me mechanical di uh, disease. And there are people in the room who work on mechanical release of drugs in at the site of arteriosclerosis. Uh, mechanical factors may contribute to plaque rupture, not only the uh, inflammatory, 
trigger not only by inflammatory and arterial sclerosis, once it has become manifest clinically, it has a various phenotypes. So it's really complex, depending on if you are old, if you are a woman, if you are uh, have just a plaque hemorrhage, if you are elderly, that disease may look very different. So I've tried to show you the complexity of this disease and uh, what I want to express with this complexity. If you fracture a bone like myself uh, four weeks ago, it's a simple disease. You can either have a cast or a screw, and that's what, uh, what uh, leads to your cure potentially. But in arteriosclerosis, we have a challenging disease, but that also means we have uh, thousands of possible avenues to this disease, and very few of them are yet explored. So I believe it's important to move forward to this grand goal of eradicating this uh, heart disease, which will eradicate the profession of uh, heart surgeons. We have heart surgeons in the room, which will eradicate the profession of cardiologists like myself, which will eradicate the profession of intensivists. I'm an int int intensivist too. Uh, what we can do there, we can deposit siRNA to change the metabolism. We have shown that here. The, one of the key points of using drugs, targeted delivery, and uh, new medications is that there is zero, is a zero window for side effects. Because we are talking about mass treatment uh, once in a lifetime for people who are healthy. So if you have cancer and you know you will die with 90% uh, probability in the next six months, then you accept some side effects. If you are living a healthy life and you should get the treatment, then you won't accept uh, immune reaction on if you infusion of a therapy. And that means we need to find new ways of really guaranteeing, predicting absence of any adverse effects in, in uh, such novel therapies. If you look at the precision, personalization aspects of this strategy towards er eradication um, of arteriosclerosis, then that means we need to find new diagnostic avenues to identify treatment candidates preferably before any event occurs. Uh, we need to stage arteriosclerosis in an individual, individual person. We, we would like to get information about the individual phenotype, functional type, mass, location. Uh, we should figure out if a drug, for example, applied in a, in a liposome or whatever, is able to reach such a disease site quantitatively. We would like to have imaging uh, or other avenues to, to, to predict that. Uh, and that means also we would need to have a, a, a range of potential therapies to enable us to choose the right one for a given patient. And we should be able to predict what this will cost. Typically new therapies are expensive, but if, if you are able to avoid such large costs as arise in arteriosclerosis, even expensive ther therapies may be really cheap for society. So let me repeat, the future of treating heart attack and stroke is the eradication of arteriosclerosis, and I believe nanomedicine is needed to do it. Non-vascular targets might be as important as vascular targets. Eradication may imply early non-invasive detection and sustained elimination of the plug in asymptomatic, moderate-risk individuals. Extremely low-risk approaches are needed. Inflammatory processes are important at all stages, plug initiation, plug progression, plug rupture, and stent stenosis. And we have an abundance of potential targets, but their relative utility is not known. There are many potentially useful drug classes today used in cancer therapy, in inflammation therapy, in whatever, but there are pitfalls, unexpected biological responses, unexpected toxicity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, questions, please? Um, if there are no questions, I have one question. Um, what, uh, what, what do you think um, uh, we, we will be, uh, is it possible to uh, perform an uh, early uh, preclinical diagnosis of vulnerable plaques with biomarkers? Uh, do you think that uh, this will become uh, possible to avoid the clinical endpoints uh, or that this is uh, fiction? We have looked at that in a prospective clinical study 
And what we have seen is that the combination of, imi of non-invasive imaging and uh, the existing biomarkers already helps us to uh, discriminate patients groups already much better who will develop events in the future. So I'm sure that biomarkers will play one of the roles, but not all of the roles. The problem with biomarkers and biology is also with arteriosclerotic disease, it's not a stable disease all, all the years. So you may have a vulnerable plaque today, but in three months you may not have a vulnerable plaque. And in nine months again, you may have a vulnerability. And the vulnerability triggers the myocardial infarction, but you would like to detect even the patients who are in between vulnerable situations. So we need a means beyond the biomarkers. Thank you. Further questions? We have time for one or two questions. As this seems to be uh, very important, nano and all this to do in the future, how do you see um, this will go? Because um, yeah, the clinical trials to prove all these aspects in patients are huge, very costly. Um, I remember, uh, I forgot the name, the Cantos trial or something of Novartis. It was ext extremely uh, high number, extreme high number of patients, and it's, so how do you foresee that these developments will indeed reach I the, I believe the patient? It's a whole ecosystem question. So we have the ecosystem of regulations, regulatory uh, rules, pharma companies, uh, physicians, etc. And in some way, in this area of increasingly personalized medicine, we need to realize that in the end, a disease that a patient has, has may be his unique disease. It's based on a unique personality. It may have like cancer, a unique uh, genomic background, like in, in, a, in a patient, it certainly has a unique uh, physio uh, physiologic uh, and morphologic background. Each block in a patient is different than the other. So we need to find to uh, identify those differences and find new ways of trials to predict e effects, for example. If you have hypertension, you will get the drug. If it does not help, you will get another drug. So it's a personalized approach in some degree to your disease. And that means if you find uh, ways to identify short time progression or short time switch of a vulnerable block to a non-vulnerable block, this may be one way to identify in your individual person if a, if a drug can be effective. So I think we need to abandon large multicenter trials as the sole entry criterion for new therapeutic interventions because they are just not feasible in low prevalence diseases or in situations uh, where you have a low risk of events or in situations uh, where you have sufficient individual vari variability. It's a, yeah. One short question, please. Um, in the Nanoathero project, right at the beginning, we had a meeting of the Ethical Advisory Board and asked the question about um, animal models and the fact that animals don't have the same symptoms. And one answer that was given was, but humans have enormous variability. Is it ever going to be possible to do the sorts of preclinical studies that would map human variability because you have one or two animal models and they will be presuming a rather narrow range of responses, whereas the human responses might be 10 times wider. There are no good animal models of arteriosclerosis. There are animal models that look like arteriosclerosis, but the biology is so much different than, than what you have in the patient that this is difficult. And this may be one of the problems that sometimes is so difficult to, tran to, to translate the finding in a mouse mm -hmm. to, a, to a clinical trial because we are just looking at the wrong at the wrong disease that looks this looks similar but is different in 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 humans so we need to find ways to do a kind of what, what we have done in preclinical work up to that now in in mice we need to look at things like phase zero studies proof of feasibility in a very few patients maybe even with a very low dose of something that just allows imaging there is certainly a need for, for a completely new generation of uh, trial designs. And if you think of, uh, of uh, car driving, if you drive too fast 
and uh, you get uh, photographed by driving too fast. Uh, the judge will not require a randomized multi multi center trial to make to to tell you that you have to pay your fine and that means in our society we accept proofs of truth that are not based on large statistics but on precise individual information and I think that has its value in, it will needs it to have its value in medicine too thank you thank you very much professor Hunziker, for this uh, important uh, points.